Algebra 2 CREM, New York State Algebra 2 Regents, Common Core, Basics, Trigonometric Functions, Concept Number 18, Trigonometric Values for 60 Degrees. Now, the odds of someone doing exactly what you tell them to do is pretty slim, but I guarantee that if you cram with me, you'll become an Algebra 2 Master. What we're doing here is super effective. I'm coaching you to turn your wants and desires of getting an A or perfect test scores into a brand new paradigm. I want to include everyone who needs a boost in Algebra 2. And if I could stick every single math student with a syringe containing a healthy dose of eye-opening awareness of their inner mathematical genius, I probably would. So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to order the complete cram session beyond the trigonometry series, all right? You have lots of peers, um, classmates, and colleagues who could also benefit from an Algebra 2 boost for me as well. So tell them to inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com so that they too can order the complete cram session. You'll be glad you spread the word because they'll make great study buddies. The concept of cramming often has a negative connotation, but what people are actually thinking of is hurrying, which is a result of fear and can consequently be destructive to your learning process. We're not hurrying here, we're cramming and there's a huge difference. Hurrying is jam packing tons and tons of unorganized information into your mental spiritual DNA over a tiny amount of elapsed time, whereas cramming is taking quantum leaps in your understanding in what seems like a very short instant, okay? So let's delve into the concept of trigonometric values for the acute angle 60 degrees. Trigonometric values for 60 degrees. Express the exact values of the sine, cosine, and tangent function for the angle um, 60 degrees, okay? And notice, instead of using the variable x, I use the lowercase variable theta. Um, we're just using theta here. It's a Greek letter because we're going to use the variable x to represent the x-coordinate, so we don't want to double up on functions. So at this time, definitely press pause and take a moment to think. And a lot of you have already memorized these values, which is excellent, okay? Because when you deal with these sort of um, tests, such as the Regents exam, and for those of you who are using this for other standardized exams, 60 degrees is one of the common angles. So it's good to memorize the three basic trig functions for such an angle, okay? Press pause if you need to, and I'll give you a moment to think. All right, so hopefully by now you were able to come up with an answer. And if not, that's completely fine. That's why we're here to work through this together. Before expressing um, the trigonometric values for 60 degrees, we need to understand the concept of standard position, okay? Doing this is going to simplify finding all the trig trigonometric values because 60 degrees is um, an angle in standard position, and you're going to see why in just a moment. It has about six to seven key features. The concept of standard position, that is, okay? It's defined by about six to seven key features. The first feature is that the vertex of any angle in standard position, including 60 degrees, um, is located at the origin, okay? The ray on the positive x-axis, which is slightly highlighted here, um, is called the initial side ray. The other ray, which terminates after the angle grows in the counterclockwise direction, is called the terminal side ray. But we'll be cute and call this ray R for short, okay? Now, as a part of this whole standard position deal, we're going to do something. We're going to cut this ray off here at this point P, P being short for point, and we're cutting it off at um, this position, coordinate X and Y coordinate Y, okay? 
And by doing so, what we now have um, is a segment length rather than a terminal side ray. So I guess we can call this a terminal side segment. And um, by cutting off our terminal side ray at this point P, what we can do is resolve our segment into its X and Y components. So for our purposes, the extent of this terminal side segment bound by point P and the origin, you know, the vertex of the angle, it's going to go to the extent of X. This X is the same as this X, okay? And it's going to rise to the level of Y, this Y being the same as this Y. And what do we have here after resolution of our um, segment length? We have a, an imaginary right triangle of sorts. So we'll just indicate that here with this right triangle indicator, okay? All right, so that's that. And note that since we're going to the extents of our X and Y coordinates upon resolution, this triangle is the basis for finding these trig values, okay? When we're dealing in a Cartesian coordinate um, X, Y plane. And note, sometimes the uh, trig functions are negative and positive. Well, this is where it comes from. The fact that the X coordinate is positive in quadrant one, in quadrant two is going to yield um, you know a positive value okay but there are instances where the angle occurs in quadrants um, two and three and not quadrants one and four I think I said quadrant two before I meant quadrant four so if the angle is in quadrant um, two and three the x coordinate is going to be negative yielding um, a negative value that will contribute to these trig functions, okay? And obviously the x-coordinate is going to be negative because you're on the negative aspect of the x-axis. And we can say the same thing for the y-coordinate. It's going to be positive in quadrants one and quadrants two, but if we're in the negative realm of the y-axis, it'll, with a terminal side um, ray or terminal side segment, ending in quadrants three and four, this y coordinate will be negative if located in these regions, okay? But it's not the same for the segment length or what's now a hypotenuse of our right triangle, okay? This is a segment length, so it's a measure of distance. And in order to find its magnitude that contributes to the trig functions, we have to use a variation of the distance formula. Well, the distance we're measuring is r, and that's equivalent to the square root of its x-coordinate squared plus the y-coordinate squared. But you'll notice this is a, definitely a variation of the distance formula. The only thing we left out was the initial point, because usually we take the square root of the x-coordinates, that's the um, final x position minus the initial x position, but our initial x position is zero in the x direction. So we don't have to be redundant and write that in here. That's why we only include the x coordinate. And the same for y. We usually add the um, difference of the y coordinate squared, but um, we only include our final y position here. And we don't include our initial y position at the vertex of zero in the y direction because it would be redundant to write zero. Save yourself time and ink by not writing zero and what you get is this, okay? So in summary, um, the ray or r has a measurement of the square root of its x-coordinate squared plus its y-coordinate squared, okay? And squaring the x-coordinates and y-coordinates whether you're in quadrant one, two, three, and four, is going to eliminate any negative signs. And you undo this, obviously, by taking the square root of the sum, okay? And so as I previously insinuated, the trigonometric values for 60 degrees depend on the fractional ratios of the x-coordinate, y-coordinate, and the segment length of the hypotenuse r. Okay, and um, when you do 
uh, simplify uh, the fractional expressions for any right triangle that has the an angle of 60 degrees in, um, in this corner and obviously 30 degrees is going to oppose it and you know 90 degrees completing our inner angle summation of 180 degrees the sides will have the following ratios after it could okay let me just show you what i'm talking about so the ratio of this is going to be radical three after fractional simplification but there could be a three radical three here okay but at the end everything will simplify the side opposing 60 degrees will have a fractional simplification value of the square root of three which is approximately like 1.7, I believe. The side adjacent to 60 degrees will simplify to a value of one. And the hypotenuse length will always simplify to a value of two. Okay, so for a triangle of this type with a 90 degree angle and 60 degree angle, the adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse will always have a ratio of one to radical three to two, okay? So let's go ahead and now use this ratio to fill in the blanks of the exact values of our sine, cosine, and tangent functions. So sine is traditionally, traditionally um, the opposite side, which in this case corresponds to our y-coordinate, which is going to be radical three over the value of our hypotenuse segment length so the sine of 60 degrees is radical three over two, or the square root of three over two. As for cosine, that's conventionally um, going to be defined as the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, or in this case, um, the corresponding x-coordinate, which is one, divided by our segment length, which has a magnitude of two. Therefore, the cosine of 60 degrees is going to be one over two, okay? Now the tangent is um, a derived quotient function that is basically going to be the uh, sine of 60 degrees divided by its cosine. And if you divide radical three over two by one over two, um, the twos are gonna cancel. <laughs> and then you just get radical three over one or instead of being redundant and writing this one in the denominator, you're going to get radical three. So here goes our answers for the exact values of the sine, cosine, and tangent function of 60 degrees. These are the basic trigonometric values for 60 degrees that it would be good to memorize. And intellectual comprehension of this material was not difficult at all. And after the short amount of time it takes to complete this entire cram session, you'll be prepared to answer a battery of questions about any Algebra 2 concept. So inbox me at memedicine at gmail.com to order the complete cram session. Good luck and thanks for tuning in.